Welcome to episode 69 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I will show you a new free model called Longcat that works well for text to video and image to video workflows and can be run locally in Comfy UI. What makes it unique is its ability to extend videos, allowing you to create long videos like the one in this example, where it continues from scene to scene without stopping unlike the start frame to end frame projects we have used so far. So it can be quite useful if you plan to make long videos, as you will see in this tutorial. It might not work on all video cards, so make sure you check the settings I recommend you try. You can find the model creator on Hugging Face to read more about it. It's under the MIT free license and is a single model that can generate from text and also from images. I found smaller models on the Kijai Hugging Face page, both for the model and for the LoRa used to speed up generation. Get the workflow for free from Discord and drag it inside Comfy UI. In this note, you'll find all the information you need to run it. For the models you saw earlier, I included direct links here. I'm using the FP8 scaled version, but if you have more than 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you can try the bigger model. The models need to be placed in the Diffusion Models folder. Click here to start the download, then navigate to your Comfy UI folder and look for the Models folder where all the models are. Place it inside the Diffusion folder. Once the model is downloaded, it needs to be loaded in this node. You can press the R key to refresh the node definition so Comfy UI can detect it. Then for the LoRa, download the Distill LoRa and place it in the LoRa's folder. Then load it in this node. You also need a VAE model that you place in the VAE folder and load it in this node. The last one is a text encoder model, which you place in the clip folder and load here. It only works with the BF16 version, as the FP8 version doesn't seem to work with this node. For the nodes used, you can install them from the manager if you don't already have them. Now that you have the nodes and models, what you can do is load an image. You upload an image, let's say this portrait image. The image is resized using this node, so choose a ratio that fits your image, since this will also be the final video dimension. Adjust the width and height accordingly. I tested a few resolutions, and for portrait, this size worked fine on my RTX 4090 card. It was able to go higher, like this size, but it took much longer to generate and was really slow. For this larger size, I actually got an out-of-memory error. So if you have a card with more than 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you can try that. If not, use smaller sizes and just upscale after. The video is then encoded and sent to the video sampler. For the model part, I use this scaled version since it's around 15 gigabytes. And for the LoRa, I use the Distill LoRa so I could generate faster. When I click here, I can see more info. There's also a bigger LoRa, but you need more steps to run that one. I used the distill version with only 10 steps. For the prompt, I got better results when I described what is in the scene and then what movement or action the subject does. It understands what you mean, but for the camera movement, it didn't always behave as I wanted. It depends on the prompts and what you try to create. For steps, I used 10, CFG, 1, and Shift 12. For the scheduler, I used this new one, but if you get an error saying it's not in the list, that means your node is not updated to the latest version, or you have a different version of the WAN video wrapper. This is how the result looks. It's pretty good at real-life interaction with objects. Now comes the hard part that usually causes most of the errors. If you don't have enough VRAM, you'll get a lot of out-of-memory errors. Using block swaps allows you to still run it on a lower video card if you have enough RAM and a good processor. You can set values between 0 and 48. If you have a video card with more than 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you can reduce the block number to 0 and it will generate faster. If not, start increasing this number. For example, someone tested it on a laptop with 8 gigabytes of VRAM using 48 blocks, and it worked. Another user tested it on a 12 gigabyte card, and it still ran out of memory. You can also try adding cache none into the bat file you use to start ComfyUI to see if it helps. On my card, I got good results using around 10 to 12 blocks. Then you have this node, which should also speed up generation a little, but for some people, 
it caused a torch error when they used it. It only worked for them if they deleted or disconnected this node. For me, it worked fine as it is, so I'll keep it connected. Let's try another example. I'll use this portrait ratio of a bunny. Now we need to adjust the size. I look here at the portrait values and then adjust the size to fit. Once we have that, we only need a prompt. I usually use ChatGPT for prompts, but let's just add a random one to see what we get. Let's run the workflow. For me, it usually takes around two to three minutes, so it can be a little slower than the WAN model. If you have other projects open, like I had the video recorder open, it takes much longer. And this is the result. It looks like my bunny has psychic powers. So, as with any AI model, it's still not perfect. Try different seeds like I did here with this starting image to get different results. And I selected this version as the final one. For this one, it took two tries to get the mouse to come out from that door. It wasn't in the image, but it was able to do it. Considering the small size I used for generation, the resulting video has decent quality. I added on the right a version that I upscaled with Topaz Video AI. But you can also do text to video. Even though I prefer image to video, sometimes it can be useful. Delete the load image node, the image resize node, and the WAN video encode. I will remove this tag as well, and I can keep this one since they are similar sizes. I will add on Discord a workflow that looks just like this one. Let's say I want a portrait video, so I adjust the sizes, and then you just add a prompt for what you want to create. Here are a few examples. I tried a prompt for a woman on the street doing a selfie-style video recording. It's also pretty good at point-of-view video types that are popular on social media. Here is another image-to-video workflow that can do up to 30 seconds, but I will show you later how you can extend it to make it even longer. I think 30 seconds should be long enough for most use cases. The first 5 seconds use the same workflow, but then we extend it with an extra 5 seconds. For the first scene that starts the video, I usually make it more detailed. I want her to stir her coffee, so I generate and change the seed manually until I like the result. You can see she stirs her coffee just like I asked. Then I want another extra 5 seconds, so I enable this group, go to the prompt, and adjust it to lift the spoon. Then I run the workflow to get those extra 5 seconds. The first video is only that 5 second extension, and the second video is those two combined into a single clip, from when she stirs until she takes the spoon out. I put the nodes in a subgraph, but I also included one with the nodes unpacked, just in case there are still bugs with the subgraphs. You can click here to go inside and see what nodes I'm using to extend and overlap. It's very similar to the first workflow, but this one blends between the videos so it looks smoother. It outputs both the frames of the extended video and the combined video. To go back to the main workflow, click on this workflow name. Now let's enable another scene. I want her to take the mug with both hands and sip the coffee, and as you can see, it does just that. Then another one where she places the cup on the table and smiles. Now I'm adding scene 5, where a cat walks into the scene on the table. After running the workflow, I got this. By the way, if you don't like the result, change the seed manually and rerun the workflow. It will only rerun that five second part, not the entire workflow, because all the scenes have fixed seeds. For the last scene, I want her to pet the cat, and we got exactly what we asked for. I used subgraphs to create another workflow that allows you to extend as many times as you want. I've seen some generations online that go up to three or four minutes. I added here an example group with extension nodes and instructions on what to change. 
I used set and get nodes to load the models so it's easier to duplicate without losing connections. Here's how I do it. I select all the nodes. By the way, speaking of bugs, you can see that the prompt should be a text prompt, but if I click on it, it selects the model instead. If that happens, I usually close Comfy UI and restart it, and it shows correctly after the restart. With the nodes selected, I right-click somewhere outside the nodes on the canvas, then select Save Selected as a template and give it a name. I tried to use capital S by holding Shift and pressing S, but that triggered a comfy UI shortcut and messed up the node positioning, so I undo that and try again. You can use Caps Lock to enable a capital S or just use lowercase. Now, if I right-click on the canvas, I can go to Node Templates and select that template. It will add all those nodes, and while they are all selected, I can move them. To connect everything, just drag a link from the Extend Images output to the Source Images input, just like I mentioned on this label. Then you change the seed and prompt. Add a seed and adjust the prompt to do what you want. When you run the workflow, it will go through all those nodes and create a long video. Just repeat the steps to make it as long as you want. For those who can't run it locally for different reasons, you can run it online in the cloud on sites like Running Hub or similar ones. I like Running Hub because it already has a lot of nodes and models set up, so there are fewer problems with dependencies and errors. I'll share the link to this workflow in the video description. All you need to do is click the Launch on the Cloud button and wait for the workflow to load. You can generate between 5 and 30 seconds using this workflow, starting with scene 2 and then moving to scene 3, and so on. Just keep in mind that the workflow time limit depends on your subscription, usually between 20 and 40 minutes. So if it doesn't have enough time to run the entire workflow, you won't get the full video. It's better to enable one scene at a time so you can control each one. Before pressing Run, you'll see two options, one for the normal run that uses 24 gigabytes of VRAM and one plus option for those with a plus subscription. The plus option costs more coins but runs on a 48 gigabyte card. You can click the small eye icon to see more info. Upload your image and adjust the size to match the ratio. I recommend the sizes I showed at the beginning of the video. Add a prompt that fits and then click Run. For the block swap, you can try values between 12 and 28, which should work fine for this card. If you plan to use the plus option for bigger images, I tested 1280 by 720 pixels, and it worked well using zero for block swap. It took around 5 to 6 minutes for a 5 second video. Then you can enable the second scene, add your prompt, and run the workflow again, then enable the third scene, and so on. If I go to the task list, you can see I did some experiments, and it took about three to four minutes for a five second video. So give it a try and see if it works for you. If you found something useful, leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget about the AI challenges we have on Discord and the new collaborative projects. Thank you Legends for your continuous support. Some of you have been supporting this channel for over a year, and I'm very grateful. Have a nice day and I'll see you on Discord.